All right, guys, welcome back to episode 13 of the podcast. In this episode, Dennis gives us some updates on the travel healthcare world. We talk about some of our interactions we've had as healthcare workers with other healthcare workers. We talk about hustle culture. And then lastly, we play a new game at the end where we kind of just give rapid fire answers to various topics. Remember, if you enjoy the content, please like, comment, and subscribe as it helps grow the channel. Welcome back to another wonderful episode of Rad Talk, where sports and medicine collide. I'm Dennis. And I'm Gage. And we're going to jump right in here, you beautiful people, to um, some travel updates. And so, it's been a while since we talked about some travel. So, yes, it has. Um, and so, the, the markets continue to fluctuate. When I say fluctuate, I mean in like a bad way um, for the travelers. Yeah. So, the markets have continued to go down. I've had friends that have been taking pay decreases to stay at the same facility, which, which really sucks for the traveler to continue doing the same job, but being told that we're going to then pay you less money. Mm -hmm. Um, And typically travelers get paid all, I should say all travelers really essentially get paid weekly. And so when you're getting told you're getting paid hundreds of dollars less per week, um, you know, it accounts to your monthly totals a lot less. Um, That's kind of upsetting or the latter, to me, the latter is to go to another facility. Um, but, you know, it's nice when you can stay at one place for at least, you know, six months or, or something like that. And a little extended period of time so you can, can get comfortable at a place or or whatnot. Um, mm. Also, just another quick aside, make sure that as these rates continue to decline, that people, when if you're accepting a job, that you have a, a, a decent chunk of change, a couple, at least a couple thousand dollars or, you know, I say probably five thousand dollars or so saved up because when you find the housing you need to be able to put that deposit down um and 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 hold that house for you or hold that rental car or hold that you know get that plane ticket and so if you're quitting if you're thinking about quitting your full-time job going into traveling highly recommend have a little bit saved up for whatever's gonna go wrong will go wrong um and and then once you start that job then you start getting that you know we're getting paid to do your job then you can kind of backtrack and hopefully put that nugget back where it needs to go Mm -hmm. financially wise. Um, So I think that's, that's super important tip. I don't know if I've said it, can say that enough. Uh, Don't, don't just jump into traveling and have like nothing saved. That's probably, that's probably a tip for life. Yeah. Yeah. Always save. Yeah. Save, save some sort of financials for a rainy day or for whatever, whatever happens in your life. Experts Um, always say like what, three months, I read somewhere. I think it's three months if you don't have a stable job, and then it's closer to like six to nine months if, or excuse me, it's three months if you have a stable job. Like you're not ever mm-hmm. going to risk losing your job. Which after COVID, who knows if that exists? True. But it's even longer if you have a job that's a little more volatile and you could lose it, you know, more yeah, easily. Yeah. So. And and even you know, and even being let go from various jobs. If I've noticed that um, different hospitals, they've been being able to hire different folks. And so if you they were able to bring somebody in to fill your job and all of a sudden they decide they don't need you, hopefully if, if it's a good facility, it'll, they'll keep you around for the extent of your, their contract that they promised you, yeah. but they don't necessarily have to. And so if they yeah. choose, you know, we've hired somebody to fill your role. We don't need you for the you know, six weeks you have left or whatever that is. Um, we're just going to let you go yeah. move along. We wish you the best. And so if you get let go from a job, make sure that you have some money saved up because then you got to, yeah, that's, that's a good point. How, yeah. how quickly it's going to be for you to find your next job. And so there's no, there's nothing secure about anything when it comes to anything truly. But, but when you're working as a traveler, um, it's even less secure yeah. um, on, on various things. So. I was uh, fairly new to traveling in general, you know, before I met you, I didn't, right. I knew there was um, doctors that would travel, you know, locums, whatever, but it was never, I still don't think it's as big as an industry as like the techs or nurses side mm-hmm. of things. Mm-hmm. So my question to you here is mm-hmm. when you first started, you started before COVID, but then the people that started around COVID, like, wasn't this always going to be the outcome? Like you knew that you knew COVID rates couldn't last mm-hmm. whether uh, because I don't, for whatever reason, they weren't going to last people, the, uh, full timers that were already there were already pissed off that you're, they're getting travelers are getting paid way more to do the same job. So right. I was kind of curious to hear your thoughts on like, you know, wasn't this always the eventual outcome 
Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I, I think, I don't know if a lot of, I don't know how many people actually knew that, but I feel like I, I knew this was, I know the rates fluctuate. I know things don't always stay the same. I know when I started this, you know, six years ago or however long I've been doing yeah. this now, um, that the rates would, I think when I started, obviously I didn't know that they would continue to, to just rise and rise and rise. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, and there's crazy things that happen. I remember talking when I first, when I first got into doing sonography, I remember talking to a lady that said she had been a traveler for 10 years, said that, you know, there was times when she started, when she took a full-time job, she got a sign-on bonus. Yeah. And I remember when I started, I was like, it, the economy, how it was, there was like, first off, there was no jobs. You couldn't, yeah. you couldn't find a job. I know when I, I, I struggled to get work after school. Um, and there, so there definitely was no sign on bonuses. And I remember in my life and thinking like, there's never going to be, I'm never going to be in a spot where a hospital is going to be like, Hey, if you sign here for X amount of years, we're going to give you a bonus. But like that's happening a lot across the country. And so I think that's helping hospitals to probably get, sneak people away from travel. Yeah. And say, hey, stay here for X amount of time. We're going to give you $20,000, $15,000, whatever that money amount is. Mm -hmm. So they're pulling people away that way. But as COVID happened and people said, you know, I don't need to be a part of healthcare right now. I'm going to retire or they're close yeah. to retirement. So we lose these people from retirement. We lose these people from hospitals saying you know, we don't have enough work for the nurses on this floor. So we're just going to shut down floors because we're not seeing patients aside from, you know, the COVID patients. We're mm -hmm. not doing regular routine surgeries. We're not doing all these things. And so they sent a lot of people away. And so some of those people they sent away went and got other occupations, started you know learning new things, doing different jobs, going to the internet, whatever it is. Yeah. And so those people left. So you have this huge influx of people. I mean, it, it, it's like, you know, supply and demand. If, if you say all these people are gone, okay, and now we're going to, we need to start over again. COVID's, COVID's gone. Like this era has ended. Everybody just come back and they're like, well, no, we've, but we've lost tons of people to different industries yeah. and doing different things. And now we don't have enough people. Supply and demand says, well, okay, we need to pay more people to come back or increase some sort of salaries. And so they try to do that or they try, hospitals try to get away with continuing to pay these crummy salaries to people. And people are like, no. And then these third party companies come in and say, well, we can supply those people, but you're going to pay this. And they, and they say, well, we it's either don't have people or pay this. And so yeah. then the inflation, then you see the huge inflation of prices because what do you, do you go without an, without a you understaffing your floor with like one nurse or do you pay these ridiculous prices because we have to take care of patients? Yeah. You really, yeah, they didn't really have a choice. So okay. you kind of had to pay the prices, but. And so you have, and so that, and now as you know, and now we've had another um, more students are continuing to get back in the workforce, which is, it's going to happen. Students graduate yeah. and they yeah, pay yeah. for the workforce. Yeah. And so another year of more students, another, another year of more students, another year of more students. And so you're going to see, as more people enter the workforce and plus students are usually willing to take, you know, you pay because they have no experience, they pay them less starting out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, now we're, we're getting a more influx of, of people who can do the job. We're paying them less. So then, then, then that's going to bring the rates back down um, to a, a whatever they, the market decides to be, they should be. But I mean, if something else, not hopefully COVID or whatever, never happens again, but something will always affect the market to where, it changes, it becomes more volatile. And over a, a, maybe a short stint, you might see an increase of pay, like around, you know, something as simple as Christmas. Um, yeah. You know, travelers or people take vacation times around Christmas. People have get pregnant and so they need to take time away. And so there's going to be, there's travels will always exist in some capacity um, to fill pregnancies, to fill holidays. Cause now you have, you know, even around Christmas time, travelers take times away full-time employees want to take vacation time to be with their families. And so you have this influx of people that isn't going to be working there. And so what do we do? We need to bring somebody in for this short period of time to cover these holidays or whatever. And so it'll always exist. And, and around those times you might see an increase in wage in various mm -hmm. places. But yeah. but yeah, I guess that was a short up, short, long update. Yeah. on traveling. <laughs> I think the other thing <clears> that another kind of question you could answer is, when you started traveling, I'm assuming you, you got paid more to travel than you did for full time. For sure. But what, what's the point for you? What was the point of traveling? Because I feel like people have lost kind of the point 
of traveling in that it's not just about the money to make more like you travel because you want to travel, right? You can go to places, stay there for three, six months, enjoy it. Boom. You're gone. You have more freedom as a traveler because you're not tied to one area. Right. But now I think it became a lot about money. And now, mm -hmm. as you just mentioned, you're being asked to take more or less, excuse me, to stay at the same spot, which right. I don't I, So I feel like people just kind of lost the point of, traveling because the, the the wage has just got so inflated they're like oh man this is awesome because i get to make all this money and i still get the perks of the, the other perks of traveling yeah so yeah. i don't know but yeah i feel like the market was always going to come back right well and that's and you're right when everybody started you know when I, i've met a lot of people that traveled they started traveling now post COVID or right during COVID, right around yeah. those COVID times you know the market was the way it was and so people jumped into it uh -huh. and, so they, and they jumped into it because you found out you know how much more money you can make and so they're like yep. this is a no-brainer i'm gonna just dive in head first and so it's interesting being i was there before COVID. i was there during COVID when they were letting everybody go, go. from these yeah. jobs I, mean, I, I was you know i was traveling in an rv at the time and so i saw a lot of nurses that were let go from their travel jobs like I saw a lot of full-time nurses that were let go of their job. I saw a lot of sonographers and radiology folks and everybody getting let go. And I, I was one of the folks that got to stay um, because I, I just changed my shift and, you know, did some things like that. But yeah, now that everybody, everybody jumped in for the finances. And so the people who have jumped in for the traveling and the, you know, not having yeah. to deal with the work BS of the politics and things like that, we've talked about before, those folks might stick around yeah, um, but as the money decreases, see yeah. the money, the money people who did it just for the money are going to leave and go back to yeah full time. And they'll you, I mean, you can you can quickly tell when people do things for the wrong reasons. I've openly admitted I did medicine for the wrong reasons. So when you do things money for mm -hmm. money, it, it quickly it will fade when the money fades, you're going to fade. So the people that did it because they want to travel, they're still going to they'll they'll take less mm -hmm. to go to these places because they just wanted to travel instead of. Right focus right. on the money so right. but it's an interesting we'll mm -hmm. see if we have another segment coming up but maybe it will the rates will go back if mm -hmm. covid or whatever variant yeah. they come up with comes mm -hmm. back right so well maybe we'll have an update in i don't know three months or so when yeah. winter hits you know because that's mm -hmm. when covid and those kind of diseases are going to be more popular Low and touch, yeah. we'll we'll ask you again to see if the how what the change. market's like yeah and i'm, and I'm curious on how that's going to change because yeah, we're going to get in. I think we may get into this in another segment here coming up, but I think I'm super curious on, like, I have so many thoughts of how I think it's going to go, yeah. um, but I just, it's, it's a guess. So we'll, we'll see. Good. Um, so we're, I think the next segment will be, we kind of, you and I are recording this back to back, but for people listening, it will be a different episode. We mm -hmm. talked about my first couple months as an attending mm -hmm. and I briefly mentioned that uh, the interruptions are a little bit more as an attending than they were as a fellow or resident. Cause when you're a fellow or resident, they don't want to talk to you. They want to talk to the attending. Mm -hmm. So, but with those interruptions, usually they're interactions with other providers. That's usually how you get interrupted, whether that's uh, tech nurse or whoever ordered the study, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it got me thinking now that I'm done with training and I'm in my, you know, I'm an attending now, what are, I'm curious what your experience has been in terms of interacting with other, well, we can start with techs, but your interactions with techs and nurses and mm -hmm. other doctors that aren't radiologists. Cause we've been pretty open about how we interact with each other as a radiologist and an ultrasound tech. Right. So I'm interested to hear how your interactions with the other people yeah. go. In my interactions, I think um, I've been really lucky with uh, departments that I've gone to. I've gone to a lot of really departments that have, you know, as a traveler, I can speak as a traveler, um, have welcomed me with open arms and, and, and kind of like taught me things that I needed to know and like been friendly with me. And, and um, you know, some of my, some people I've met in departments, you know, you meet out with and you like have you go out to eat with or you go play sports yeah. with or you go, you know, meet their different friends and family, which is always like a cool, a cool outside of work dynamic. But I've had I'm really lucky with inside. Um, you know, work wise too, getting along with everybody really well and, and trying to fit in. I, but my mindset's always like, I try to, I treat myself like I'm one of the full time, like I'm going to be here for like forever. Like, yeah, you know, this is my forever job. Um, 
and and that's the mindset I have. I, I want to be in, like show ownership in the facility that I'm at and the people that I'm around because this might be where they're from. And like, I respect, you know, I'm very proud of where I'm from and what I've, mm -hmm. so I don't want to come in and be like, uh, you know, this is how they do yeah. here. This is, you know, whatever. Like I respect your community and where you're from. And so I've gotten along with um, great interactions with even the nurses um, that I worked with. I mean, there's always going to be like some mean folks. Yeah that are just mean um it it whether you're your nurse or a doctor or whatever whatever your profession is you're mean because you're mean um but i think as a um maybe as a sonographer i think the worst interactions that i've heard of i haven't really i don't know i i've, I've had too many bad interactions with folks so you don't have any personal experience with a bad like nothing sticks out in your mind you're like oh man i remember this one time it doesn't even have to be that bad, really. You but. know, I remember. Okay, there's one interaction that I had with uh, um, a nurse as a traveler that there was a patient that their status was. They were in my department, and it was just me and one of the other travelers there, and their status was changing. And I remember meaning calling, uh, like like it was. I don't know. They weren't looking as good as they were when they got oh, they, the patient was getting worse. The patient was getting okay. worse. Status wise. Yeah. And I was like, okay, they're in the radiology department. We don't have, get, we don't get have them out of the radiology yeah. department. Yeah, exactly. Let's get them out of here. Cause if it goes downhill, like I want them to be on their floor with their nurses, with their doctors, with their yeah. people that know they're, that was going downhill out of the department that I could yeah. see their status was changing. I can't, I can't remember all the specifics exactly, but I was like, I want to get them back with the doctors that know them, the nurses that know them. Mm -hmm. on their floor and so i remember taking taking this patient back upstairs getting the patient back to their room and then me and the other traveler had um had the patient's bed and we were like where do we put this bed and they were and they said um i remember the the nurse at the front desk said well you shouldn't have brought them up here if you uh, if you can't if you don't know where to put the bed back and you're and i'm like yeah I'm excuse like, me oh. bitch I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what what do you mean like <laughs> okay like so you uh, asked the lady you don't know what to do with the bed and i was like will anybody else help us and she was just like she like just blew us like blew us off completely and we were like okay well then forget it i'm just gonna leave the bed right here and yeah. so i left the bed at the front desk went back downstairs me and the other traveler like talked about it. i was like i can't believe like that lady wasn't like because like we we're new we we're new at this hospital both of us and and we didn't know where different things were and and um they actually contacted i think that lady or the lady's boss contacted our manager yeah. and the manager essentially told them like hey these guys brought the bed up they asked where they should return it to and the lady just said you should have thought about that before you brought the patient up not that like hey call transport or hey call this person and they'll take care of it or you guys just do that because i would i'll take it wherever you need me to yeah uh, but she was just like, you should have thought about that, that. And I was just like, forget you, lady. Like, there's no reason for you to act that way. <laughs> um, and so he went over it with them, was just like, hey, there's two travelers. They didn't know where it went. Um, this is what the lady said to them. And so I don't know how it was taken care of. But there's always like, it's just stupid yeah. stuff like that, that people just say things. You know, and, they, and it's like, this lady's going down. Like, her status is changing. Like, she definitely, if, if it gets bad, she shouldn't be in radiology. Yeah. We don't have the we don't have probably what she needs um, to help, to help her the way she probably needed to be helped. So it was a, that was a crummy instance that I've had with a, a you know, nurse being a traveler, but I'd have to, I'd have, to, maybe that's a question I'd have to really like think about other, there was, there was one. Okay. I can give you one other instance. Yeah, here we go. Here, yeah, good. This is people, um, people love tea, you know, whew, this, I was working the weekends alone and I went to, um, the, the OR called. And so I needed to go to the operating room for I don't know, a DNC or it was, I can't remember what procedure it yeah, was. Yeah. And so they need me, they say, we need you like right now. And I'm, I'm the only person in the, the hospital that does what I do. Yeah. Good. And so uh, I, I've got the ER, I've got the, I've got um, the floors that I need to take care of. And then I have, okay, I need to set up time to go do this OR patient and who's they're telling me we need you now. And yeah. so I just finished up with an ER patient. I've got like two more ER patients I'm supposed to do, but okay, they need me. So I set everything aside. I have, um, I had a, a tech assistant at this, at this particular yeah. place. 
And so she, so I'm like, Hey, like I'll be back. I take everything down. I, you know, I put all the, the scrubbed in everything I mm-hmm. need to put on to go to the OR. I walk in the room. They say that we need to go to OR room one. And so I walk in and nobody's there. And I'm like, uh, okay. Like I've got two ER patients, outpatients. I need to get to like, I'm in a, you call me down here now. And like, nobody's here. And so I'm talking, they're not in the operating room at all. Like it was, it was just like a bright operating room with nobody there. Gosh. And I was like, okay, this, they told me this is where I need to be. Like, this is room, I don't know, eight room, yeah, room, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And so on the way I was like, I'm just going to leave my machine here because this is where I'm supposed to be. And I have, you know, I have other rooms that I, I'll use different machines while I'm doing ER patients or whatever. And they need me, they'll call me back. So I stopped at the front desk and I said, Hey, um, you know, I'm here to do the, the ultrasound in that particular OR case. I'm just going to leave my machine here. Just have them call me when they want me and I'll be right back. And so I went back upstairs. I told my tech assistant, Hey, I'm going to go grab an ER. Started doing that. She got a phone call. She comes in while I'm doing uh, this yeah. ER patient. Yeah. Says, hey, like they want to know where you're at. Like they're about to get started. And I was like, I was just there like 20 minutes ago and nobody was in there. Like you're about to get started. Like you called me down before no one's there. And I, I talked to the lady at the front desk cause I didn't know where I was going. So I asked, I had to ask her which room to go to. And so I was like, okay, tell them in like 15 minutes, I'll be, I'm on my way. I, so I, 15 minutes, I send the patient, I take the patient back to the ER because um, I don't know if we had, I can't remember if we had transport or they were behind because I don't know, it was a big place. Yeah. And um, take the patient back to the ER, run back over to the OR, put the cap and shoes and things back yeah. on. Again, yeah. Walk in um, to the front of it. As I'm walking in, I see a nurse like pushing the machine down the hallway and she just like, like angry. Like she has this angry face. And I think there's yeah, another pushing your machine. You mean pushing my machine yeah, down yeah. the hallway and I, and she was just so mad. And I like, I walked up to her and she was like the, the doc, the surgeon, whoever it was is so mad at you. Where were you? Like we waited for you. You never yeah. showed you, you didn't show up. And I was like, no, no, no. Like I was here. Like I brought, obviously you knew I was here. Like I brought the machine down. And they were like, no, you needed to be in um, OR H1 or like yeah. whatever it was. And I was like, well, like they, like I went in there and I asked the front desk lady where that was. And she said, that's where it is. And she was like, no, it's the other one that's around the corner. Like, it's like, there's two separate room ones or something. Like, yeah. Good. And and I went to the wrong one apparently. And then I asked the lady, but I asked the lady at the front desk and she didn't say, Hey, like check the other one or Hey, like whatever. Like, and I'd never been there before. And she was just like, I remember her just like yelling down the hallway, like essentially like, like I was so in the wrong and like, you can't believe you did this. And like you, you gave bad patient care and like you weren't there and we needed you. And like, yeah. and I'm like, I, and I was, I'm like, I'm the only one in the hospital. Like I'm doing the ERs, the out, inpatients. And now like you just randomly drop this on a dime. Like you don't schedule, like you don't say, Hey, like there's this OR case that we're going to do at one o'clock. We need you to like set time yep. aside. And this is where you go. This is what yeah. you're going to do. Like, yeah, yeah. It was just like, be at the OR now. And I, and, and she was so mad. And I was like, and this was, you know, I was fairly new to traveling. still at this point was the surgeon was, pissed uh, 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 via the nurse. I, I never actually got to talk to the surgeon, but he wasn't in the, or he or she wasn't in the room when you went in. Well, I never made it to the room because the nurse was bringing the machine to me as I was walking into the OR. Like I wasn't walking into, like they were coming down the hall. So they were already done. They were, they were already done, finished, whatever. I don't so know. So they, they didn't need you after all. Uh, it's, it, if, it was that, if that was that important, they would have waited for you. Yep. If it, They might have been mad, but they would have waited until. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. the nurse was pushing the machine down the yeah. hall as I was walking down the hall towards her. So that's. And, and so she just like blew up on me. And I was like, well, I'm probably going to get fired from this one. Yeah. That would have been worth it. And, <laughs> you, and you don't want to work at a place like that. Yeah. And I was, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And then I got back. I remember um, once I got my machine, because she was like yelling down the hallway at me, like, they're so mad at you. They're so mad at you. And I, I like, I was, I was like, I couldn't believe it. They never called um, again. They just gave you the one warning. If they, they really wanted work. you, they would have hammered you again and said, Hey, where the hell are you? Like, we need you now. Well, like when I was in the room, I, my tech assistant had answered, like, cause I brought it down initially and then it was like, yeah, one room. yeah but and they then, didn't call you in between the initial call. And then when your tech assistant came, yeah, see, they don't wait 20 minutes. If it's urgent, they're going to, 
five minutes, that surgeon would be like, where the fuck is this guy at? Call him yeah. again. Yeah. So, and, and so she, and, and I came down as quickly as I could once I got the other patient yeah. down or whatever. And, and then, um, and she's the nurse kept just telling me how bad it was. I remember getting back into the room and calling my lead and being like, Hey, like this happened. I don't know. Like, I was doing an ER patient. I went in the room. Like I went down there to try to find this place. Yeah. And obviously I was directed to the wrong place because apparently they, if I went down the hallway, like everybody must've been in the room, like ready for me or something waiting for you. Yeah. Waiting for me. But like, I like, it's not like I was just like, forget it. Like I'm not coming. Like I literally tried to find it and just was directed to the wrong area. And then I was like, when I went back upstairs, I was like, well, I still have work to do. I'm going to continue until they're ready. If I go into an empty room and no one's there, I'm like, well, I probably have some time to do some other things. Um, and so I, I remember telling, telling my lead at the time. And she was like, I was like, what do you, what do you, you know, this is what's going on. This is what happened. Like they were really mad. The sur- she said the surgeon's really mad. The nurses are just irate because they're reproducing the surgeon's feelings to me. And, and, um, and she was like, uh, she was like, you know what, Dennis, she goes, she goes, I want to know the nurses that were touching our machine because they weren't trained to like be messing with our machine and they shouldn't touch it. And, and I was like, wow. Okay. She's like, she's like, you don't know where the OR is. She was like, they obviously, she's like, you tried to find it. They told you the wrong spot. You went back upstairs, continuing doing your job. They called you again. She's like, you're the only person in the hospital that's doing this. And so they have to understand that they need to like coordinate times and where to be. And Mm -hmm. they can't just call you on a dime and say, get get down here now Yeah, and, and expect you to just go instantly like you yeah. you know he's like this is this was planned poorly this is not your fault and i was like wow like and it was crazy because um i had other several full-time jobs where it was like i would do different things and they it was just like it was always your fault like if you you only yeah. saw the, you only saw the boss yeah like they would only come visit you if you did something wrong or if they thought you did something wrong I remember my boss told me one like this is like a crazy aside that like i was walking down the hallway and my face looked angry good i need to be like mindful all that resting bitch face yeah like i was like i was like (laughs) i was like they call me in the office to tell me my face looked angry or like i looked not endear whatever it was whatever whatever term she used and i was like i was like this is a joke like this is resting ultrasound face didn't go over very well i was like you're joking like i didn't say this but i was like you got to be kidding me yeah like you saw me from walking down a, a and then actually the next week i won an award for um the level of patient care that i gave people a patient donated money to the hospital in my name for the level of care that i was getting i was like like a little it was it was like it was like karma like it was like perfect it would have been even better if they said i saw his face walking down the hallway and i (laughs) said you know yeah i thought thought the hospital deserved some money yeah that would have been so awesome but like it was it was the karma and the irony of like it's just happening medicine the politics of this shit is it's stupid people said that to me all the time when i was in training like, oh, mm-hmm. you don't look happy. Oh, you don't sound happy. You don't sound this mm-hmm. way. You don't sound. And people will. I'm not. Um, I would. I've learned to describe it as I'm not overly um, friendly with people. Mm-hmm. Like I say what I have to say, and that's it. And people, mis- they think I'm a dickhead because I just don't right. say as much. Whereas the other doctors are just like overjoyous, and they say yeah. they talk more. They uh, people think I'm a dickhead. I'm. I'm not really. I just don't say as much as most yeah. people do. I keep right. my interactions mm-hmm. short. I don't want to talk to you. You probably don't want to talk to me. So why are we dragging this out? Like, <laughs> but uh, the, your your story, I won't I won't make you answer the question. And I'll, I'll but I'll answer it. Um, I have I haven't had any really negative experiences with other providers, even techs or nurses. Nobody has really said mm-hmm. if I you know when I did people can't see if they listen to the audio, but I'm a fairly large individual. I have tattoos, so my stature probably is why most people don't say anything to me. But when they call on the phone, when they call radiology on the phone, Mm -hmm. they're always minus one group. Um, And even though that group is usually nice, but most people are nice because they know they have no fucking clue what they're talking about when it comes to radiology. They can't look at an image. They Mm -hmm. can't decipher the image. They don't know what to order. So they know they can't be a dickhead to me Mm -hmm. because I'm the one that they're about to, I don't Mm -hmm. have to answer this question for them. Right. So I've never had any, real issues you get people that gripe and moan like why is my study it's been 20 minutes where the hell's my study like you get those kind of calls 
course. usually from the ED and you're like, chill, bro. Like you're not the only one that has yeah, stat right. studies. So you're ch- I'll get to your chest X-ray when I get to it. You know, like right. if you didn't order all these stupid ass studies that are useless that I have to sift yeah. through now. So, um, but the, the, my going back to your story, my least favorite group to interact with are surgeons. I, if it was a DNC, this person was an OB. Mm-hmm. You can still classify them as a surgeon because they do surgery. Right. But, Surgeons in general, I saw. Um, I forget the name of the page. It's an Instagram page. Mm-hmm. It's a ra- he's a radiologist in the UK, I think. But mm-hmm. he posted a meme, <laughs> and it was uh, what's the show with? Oh, and Nick Offerman is in it. Um, mm-hmm. Chris Pratt is in it. Aubrey Plaza is in it. It's a TV show, and I cannot think of the name. I'm blanking uh, on the name. Um, yeah, Chris Pratt. It's uh, Rob Lowe see. is in it. Right. Let me see if I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. Uh, but uh, yeah. But anyways, continue it. I'll, it I'll yeah. He po- he posted a meme from that show, and it's one where Nick Offerman's character is at Lowe's, and uh-huh. he's shopping for lumber or whatever. And the meme is the Parks and Rec. Parks and yeah, Rec. Parks and Rec. There you go. Yeah, the yeah. meme is the work. The Lowe's worker comes up to him, and he's like, "Can I help you?" And Nick Offerman's character says, "I know more than you," and he just walks away. <laughs> But the radiologist, he, the guy, he put he put radiologist over the Lowe's character, and then he put surgeon over Nick Offerman's character, and that's mm-hmm. kind of you know, usually my interaction with surgeons is they think mm-hmm. they know more about imaging than we do, right? Sometimes they do because they're they're specific, they're hands deep in this person's guts, so you can see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and look at the image, and you're like, oh yeah, there it is. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. they're the ones that are surgeons in general, are just a little harder to deal with because they. They read their own imaging, which I appreciate, but mm-hmm. they think we're idiots at the same time if, <laughs> if they find something and we don't. So, right. yeah, it, it's, it's different. They're the, they usually, in my experience, are the ones that call for like addendums and stuff. So you can say certain things to like help them and all this stuff. But for the most part, I, people, I've never had any like terrible interactions yeah. with your techs or nurses or your doctors, really. So, I, I think I would I would agree. I, I think aside from those like two instances, which um, you know, I didn't even have a bad instance with the surgeon because I never got to actually see the surgeon. Yeah. I never got to talk to the surgeon. I have no yeah. idea. Like I was getting the brunt force of yeah. the nurse. I mean, maybe you know the surgeon blew up on these nurses and was like, "I'm why sure it was it, misplaced." Yeah. It's why just, isn't this shit rolls me? downhill? Right. It starts yeah. with the surgeon, went to the nurses, then it hit you. Right. So. And, and I'll tell you what. But talking about this particular place is like I when my supervisor was like, you know, let me find out who touched our machine and they yeah. need to have proper training. And like, that was their first thought. I was like, wow, like yeah. this, so this is how, like, yeah. this is how a good place <laughs> is supposed a good work to work. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you're like, you support me. Like I told you what happened. You can listen, you know, they, I'm sure they listen yeah. to what the other side said that happened and they were understanding like, Hey, you know, this individual is the only person here in the hospital. They're taking care of everything. And you guys just threw this on him. He doesn't even know where he's going. He obviously made an attempt to get there. Yeah. And and went to the someone in place. someone in your department didn't tell him, hey, no, it's not this one. It's just around the corner. Yeah. Like, yeah. That person is at the front desk. What the hell else are they supposed to do? You answer <laughs> the phone call, you direct people to like where they need to go. Like that's your job. You can't. Yeah. And if the surgeon mm-hmm. uh, it's I think my issue, one of my issues with surgery is they want everyone to drop what they're doing for them immediately. Mm-hmm. So if a surgeon I've had we have to do uh, I don't know what you would call them, level checks, I guess. So like spine surgeons uh, that are about to do, they're about to do spine surgery. And then the, the x-ray techs go in and they run the C-arm and do the x-rays and yada, yada, yada. But at most hospitals or a lot of hospitals, the surgeon has to check, right? So he takes a, pro- he or she takes a probe that we can see on x-ray and they put it at a level. So let's say they're at C5 in the spine, mm-hmm. cervical spine. Yeah. And because bad outcomes have happened, right? People, surgeons have operated on the wrong level. So now they have to, a lot of hospitals call us. So the tech says, Hey, I took these images. Surgeon wants to know where they're at. Mm-hmm. So you can already tell the tech is, um, what's the word? They're tense, right? Because they're in the OR, they're dealing with usually neurosurgeons or orthosurgeons. Right. And they take the image. A lot of times they're not great because the patient's, un, you know, under anesthesia, they can't do this, that, or the other. Yeah. And it's just, you have to stop what you're doing right then and there to like mm-hmm. check because the surgeon's got the neck exposed and yeah. you have to say, Hey, what level does he, he or she want to be at? Mm-hmm. You say it, you hope there's a landmark, right? If you, 
you hope they included C2 so you can count. It's just, right. it's stressful and you have yeah. to stop what you're doing immediately for the surgeon. So a lot of, I don't like when they put us on the spot like that. Like when they call from yeah. the OR and say, Hey, I need you like now. Yeah. And you could have said, Hey man, like, why didn't you call? Mm-hmm. Like you said, and say, Hey, surgery scheduled for one, mm-hmm. yada, yada, or ha- have the nurse call surgeons yeah. say like, Hey, I'm 10 minutes away from needing this mm-hmm. person. Can you call them now and say, like warn them. Right. So yeah, the, it's just the, the, ultimately every experience you explained is bad for the patient. Like regardless mm-hmm. of how you feel, your feelings really don't matter. Like, cause you're going to get over it. Right. Like your late, your lady that's crashing, you don't know where to put her. Yeah. So you have to leave her in the front. That's not where she needs to be. If she's crashing, she needs to right. be in the room where there's right. a cart and there's yeah. things that if this hits the fan, we can save her right now. So ultimately right. the patient yeah. is, and then they just, they're the ones that are like, unfortunately yeah. suffering. So well, with that, with the, the lady there, we, um, I did take her, I took her back to the room. So yeah. she, we went, okay. she, went straight yeah. to, she went straight to the room, but the issue was with this was, okay. Oh, her, I, her bed that you brought. Oh, exactly. okay. Okay. And I so see what you're saying. Yeah. You, you put your in your room, you're good and you're back. You're safe. Like okay. we made, sure yeah. that we took care of like the patient was taken care of, but then it yeah. was like, okay, I've got this extra bed. What do I do with it? Yeah. And, and so then that was like, okay, well, that's a different story. Yeah. 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 So I, we took care of the patient in that instance. Now the, the surgery instance, obviously there was a lot of people in the room. She, the patient was taken care of. They wanted us in the room. Had they, have, they really needed us, then they would have waited. Yeah. Um, you know, and so everything, it wasn't, you know, the patient's got the appropriate care um, because the surgeon yeah. would, you know, yeah, they, got, yeah. they, they would have waited and they, they were yeah. just upset that I wasn't there exactly when immediately. They yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I said, so. you know, I pick up the phone. I want you here now. Yeah. And, and they weren't there right now. And so that's why, you know, they're upset. And so the patient, yeah. luckily in these instances, the patient's got the care that they yeah. needed. Um, but I mean, the moral of the story is just don't be, don't be a dickhead, you know? Yeah. Don't be mean. Every, everyone in medicine is overworked. They're stressing out. You know, sometimes they're the only person doing what they do, mm-hmm. you know? So just, you have to just be a human being. <laughs> like right. it's not hard. Because, I'm guilty yeah. of it sometimes too. I, and my, I answer the phone and people think I'm angry already, but like, I, I'm not angry yeah. most of the time. So <laughs> but, well, I, I think, you know, and it goes back to everything. I think communication, you know, communicate with people um, what you need, um, be open and honest. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes that's difficult, but you know, and I, I'll, I'll go, I think, I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but I can remember I had like the, utmost respect for an impo- uh, a coworker that would tell me like i would ask i was like hey i want to take this day off to do this could you do it for me and she would just say no yeah and, and like and i'm like like she, and and you sometimes you like wait because some people will say no and then they give you like oh because i gotta watch my kids yeah she just said that. no yeah you say no and like i was like oh like wow like i have a lot of respect for that because it's no because she doesn't want to do it i don't owe you a reason and people can take that as mean yeah. but they will I don't want to, it's like, it's like you're returning an item in a store. Like I need to tell you. Yeah. You don't why. have to justify shit. Just, you don't yeah. want to do it. You don't want to do it. So and don't, and don't be the person that makes people justify things. If somebody, if yeah. somebody doesn't want to do something and they tell you, no, I don't want to do it. Don't make them feel bad because you can't go to the party or what, whatever it is that you wanted mm-hmm. to do. You have your obligations that you had to work a certain day and you have to be there that day. And if you can't find somebody else to take it, don't try to make guilt somebody into to taking it or mm-hmm. if somebody tells you no, like, you know, it just, I, I it, that drives me nuts. And, and I've talked to a lot of coworkers who I've said, Hey, you know, could you, would you work this day for me? And they say no. And then they give me a reason. And I'm like, Hey, like you, like, I appreciate you giving me the reason, but like, if I ask you to do something and you don't want to do it, like you, you don't owe me anything. Like we're still, mm-hmm. we're still friends. We're still colleagues. We're still whatever. But like, I don't want you to feel like uh, you owe me, you owe me that. Cause you don't. Just remember that conversation when your tires are slit. It wasn't me, you know? Your tires are slit. Yeah, it was not me. Exactly. You wouldn't you know work this day for me. Oh, just coincidence that your tires are flat when you leave. You can't work. go home. You, oh, you can, yeah. oh, you're already here. You might as well just yeah. work it. You're already here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like that's legit. Oh, gosh. Um, okay. So, so think, yeah. We, that, right. was, that was a beautiful, beautiful segment. Yeah, I think so. The next segment is kind of something – is very popular on uh, social media, I guess. And I've seen it a bunch. I just happened to see something last night. I don't remember what it was that made me think of this. So I think it's defined as what people would call hustle culture. Right. So you're the grind, I guess is what the kids would call it. <laughs> the so I'm curious to know 
especially since we're in an era of medicine where we're kind of working like, you know, volumes are going up, pay's mm-hmm. going down, staffing's going, everything's going, they're going opposite directions when they don't need to be. Um, so it's, we have to hustle essentially mm-hmm. to work, yeah. but my thoughts or my question is, what are your kind of your thoughts on the uh, hustle culture, I guess, in general? Yeah, I and think like okay. hustle culture with like a work life balance. Work life balance is probably the more common phrase. So what are your thoughts on on that? I, I think, you know, I think as an aside, I think if you want to be like uber successful, I think your work life balance is going to be probably terrible. It doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, it, it, there's no, there's no balance. Like yeah. Elon, Elon Musk and these guys that are just like you know running the world. Like I feel like their yeah. work life balance probably doesn't exist because. But to the, but to them, it's not work life balance. It's just that's life. It's their. Right? They they don't consider it work. Yeah, it's just so they yeah. enjoy it. That's why they can do right. it. And then and then, but I feel like a lot of these people's you know their families probably. I, and I'm assuming you know your family something has to suffer because if you're working yeah. all the time. Yeah then there's, you know, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. Like nobody has extra hours. And so how you spend those hours is, is, is yeah. whatever it is. So, I mean, maybe you're not spending as much time as yours with your kids. I think in terms of hustle culture, I think, you know, if, if you have a job and you want to have something on the side that brings you some sort of income, whatever that is, you know, uh, that's, that's great. If you can do that and still, spend time with your family or Mm -hmm. I think it's just, it just goes down to whatever's most important to you. If you're chasing money, if you need money, then there's a lot of other avenues for you to go into um, aside from, I mean, just, I mean, simply like, you know, stuff that, that we're doing this podcast, we're not, I don't know what we'd call this hustling, but I mean, we, I think we enjoy this. That's why we Mm -hmm. started it. But if it ends up turning into some sort of a revenue stream, like that would be, that would be Mm -hmm. great. But this, but us doing this takes time away from, um, Gage getting to watch his dogs that he loves mm-hmm. so much that you heard barking that I heard no, barking yeah. um, and and me you know whatever else that I love it would take away from that but I'm doing I'm choosing to do this because I, I enjoy this um, and this is just something else aside from work and so yeah. I think I think that hustle culture can turn from and maybe that's what created people leaving you know that this industry or different industries is they started doing this hustle thing and they're like wow i really enjoy this i'm able to make the same amount of money i can go talk about the smurfs seven days a week mm-hmm. or i can go work as a nurse in the hospital or you know whatever mm-hmm. i'm giving a, a crazy analogy yeah but but i think um hustling is 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 a great thing but i think spending time with your family and and spending your time how you want to spend your time if you're able to do that you know if you if you have to support your family and you're like i i have to do this then yeah that's that's a different story that's that's a different story but if you're hustling just because that's you know what you want to do or what you enjoy or whatever yeah yeah because i think i think a lot of people put too much into the hustle culture too i think they're like Mm -hmm. you have to have a side like what do you like uh, you know you're working your full-time job what are you doing on the side like, yeah. like well, uh, spending yeah. time with my family, like coaching sports. Fucking loser. Like you're like, yeah, you're like, this is what do you do? You're a loser, man. Yeah. And that's not, it's like that's not a that's, loser at all. Like that's my one of my issues with how how hustle culture is portrayed, at least on social media, is toxic as fuck. They make it seem like you can't do if you're not working 18, 19 hours a day, then you're a loser. Like you spend those five hours sleeping. Uh-huh. Make sure you hit the gym, you eat right, all this which that's just general advice. But they make it seem like if you're not doing that you're just you're never going to amount to anything yeah you're so right. that's that's part of my issue with at least how it's portrayed in social media me mm-hmm. personally this is an interesting take i think it's probably different than yours mm-hmm. i don't believe in work-life balance for myself personally mm-hmm. i am like going all the time i was off this week mm-hmm. uh for vacation but i couldn't do anything and it's i don't know what to do with myself or, like, i yeah. i can't um <laughs> Oh man, what was it? Uh, there's a famous, I think it's Drake's, it's a Drake song. Oh, but he says he worked so hard. He forgot, or no, it's Post Malone. He said he worked so hard. He forgot how to vacation. Like mm. I've been doing this for 14 years, like just all the time going, I don't know how to. So oh. for me personally, I don't believe in work-life balance. That's why I can do this. I'll mm. put the, this, this and work before anything else. I don't have a family or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I'm not like sacrificing anything, but yeah, uh, I think, I think the, my overall point is that it's, it's individual. Right. If you if you focus and you can um, really focus for eight, nine hours a day and that's all you can do, that's all you can do. Like mm-hmm. I, I saw another thing 
I forget who was telling it, but it was about, oh, it was 50 Cent, I think. No, it was somebody, but it was per pertaining to Eminem. Mm -hmm. And they were shocked. It was Akon maybe, but they were shocked because Eminem would work at his job. He would go to the studio like a nine to five. Mm -hmm. And he, if he was trying to work, collaborate with some another rapper, this particular rapper was like, oh yeah, I'll be there at like two, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they would work for three hours. And then he said Eminem would go home and he, the other guy's like, what are you doing? And he's like, this is just this is me. This is how I function. I treat it like a job. This mm -hmm. is when I'm productive. This is how I do. Th and it worked for him, right? He's uber successful, right? Some people work 22 hours a day and that's mm -hmm. what works for them. So I think my overall point is one, it's the way it's portrayed on social media. Ignore that shit. Those mm -hmm. guys are, we talked about this in the last episode, but those guys are detached, right? They're at the, the top of where they're at, where they want to be. Right. Mm -hmm. so everyone's like oh yeah easy for you to say you're already there we didn't get to see them do it on the way but yeah. they're so far detached from what the average person has to go through i think their advice is for the most part useless yeah so just individualize it i think i i think um i'm gonna throw my thought in here i think i you know i follow a lot of what gary vaynerchuk says i know i should mm -hmm. say follow a lot. i listen to a lot of the, his content yeah. um and and i think you know, he's obviously like a, a very hard worker. He's, he's dabbles in everything. He's entrepreneur yeah. from the get go. And I think he says it best. He's like, I have people that I know that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. that are like miserable, that hate, hate everything. They have everything they could ever wanted and they're miserable. And he's like, I know people that make $60,000 a year and they coach their kids sports teams and they take one vacation a year and they, and he's like, they're so happy. And he's like, so when in terms of like hustle or, or whatever you're doing, like you have to remember, like, it's your life and whatever brings you the most amount of happiness and allows you to take care of your family and, and be a productive member of society. Um, I think that's like the answer. I think if, if, you know, if I have a side hustle of this podcast and this merch selling and all these sponsors mm -hmm. or, or whatever, like yeah. that's, great. that's great for me. But like, you know, I have a, a cousin or a family member or whomever who's coaching his kids sports teams, running the program, trying to raise money for the cheerleading squad, trying to like do different things, whatever that is like. And, you know, that's not his side. Like that's his family's thing. Like that's like that's great, too. There's not there's nothing wrong about that. And he shouldn't demonize somebody who doesn't who's not trying to sell something on the side or, or yeah. working, you know, 10 working 15 hour days seven days a week and you know like if people who whatever your choice in life is is like that's that's your choice obviously hopefully be a productive member of society yeah yeah have a have some sort of work or something that you believe in that you yeah. can but but if you don't want to have a side hustle like don't, don't and this do is it. this is just um hustle culture in general i think we could do a longer segment or a, di a different segment on hustle culture within medicine mm -hmm. because it's it's its own thing like, oh, yeah. especially with doctors, mm -hmm. if you're not working gazillion hours, like, you know, they don't think you're dedicated yet. So I think those yeah. were just our thoughts in general on right. hustle culture. But I think maybe we could do it in the future, an episode or a segment yeah. just on hustle culture within medicine, because it's a it's a different kind of category. I mean, even, even with the rads, you know, like like you guys, like um, you work your normal with your partners, but then you can ve moon, moonlight V rad. Mm -hmm. Or like all these mm -hmm. other ways you can just you know create other avenues within medicine yeah you know, and in in sonography as well you know i could i could do the travel gig and i could do a prn somewhere else and i could hustle yep. and i could buy an ultrasound machine and do it and yourself yeah do it myself and <clears throat> do a 3d 4d baby foot you know like there's oh so many if i really wanted to like go all in on this medicine um you know, thing you there's always these avenues that you can go within your field that you're already in too. Um, and maybe that's something that we look into. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, there's business opportunities everywhere. Business opportunities. So. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. But uh, okay, so now we have a little bit different segment. I don't know what to call it, but I'm going to give you what do we have? Four, four or five things. No, we have five things. Yep. We'll just do, a, since we're already at 50 minutes, we'll just do like a quick little blurb about each right. thing that I'm about to mention. Sure. So we'll start with, well, this, is, this is a little outdated, but give me your brief thoughts on Elon changing the 
name of Twitter to X, I guess. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I, I'm probably like the, one of the worst people to ask this question to because I don't use Twitter. As, I don't either. Is like, is anything really, unless like something's going on in the world and I want like instant Immediate. live, yeah. yeah, instant live updates of like people that yeah. are going through that particular, whatever it is. And I'm like, what, you know, so that's the only time I really like dive into Twitter. So I really don't know. I don't, uh, I don't have a purpose for, for Twitter. I think X is like a dumb name. I don't know, but I know he, Elon, he loves letters. I don't know what is he's obsessed with these letters. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of his, he has a model. One of his Teslas is called model X. Yeah. And so his I kid's think, name is like 12 letters. I don't, I don't know what it is obsession. I don't know if he's trying to be unique or different or what, but. I, and maybe that's part of, and, and I don't know, I'm, I'm totally guessing, but I know he has Asperger's uh, disease. Oh, and so okay. Yeah. And so I know that a lot of things correlate to, um, yeah. with his intensity on different specific yeah. things and things like that. Um, but I, I think he, he wanted to be funny too, with his like Teslas or something. And he named it like sex or something. It was like something. Yeah, he has a model S, a model E and a model X. Yeah. Yep. And so he just thought it was hilarious to yeah. name all these various models different so ways he likes to he likes to stick it to the government too like he's a F, i think fcc or whatever whatever he is he's just yeah. like he likes to do different things that he thinks is hilarious he's a he's a unique individual i think the name is stupid i'm not sure yeah. where it comes from yeah I don't you, know you can't send tweets anymore because then it's called x i don't know what they're called now yeah like the whole point of twitter was you sent tweets now you send x's yeah. like it makes right. it dating i don't know Which i is, think it's stupid yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's dumb too, and I think this allows Threads, which is Facebook's offspin, which to... is Facebook's copy of Twitter. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Fa oh, literally... Marky, Marky, and Elon going out. That's probably why they want to fight now because yeah. Mark he copied right. uh, Thread or he copied Twitter and made Threads. Even What's though Elon it? didn't create Twitter, I'm not sure. That's yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have to just see. Yeah, who who wins? I mean, is does Elon win or does Mark win or you know? Uh, I, I think it's a dumb name, regardless. I think it's stupid. yeah. All right, let's do. So the next one is something we've talked about before, but there was another prominent celebrity that came out and endorsed uh, whole body MRI. Yeah. I um, I read the article and the the celebrity posted. Depending on how you you twist it, they said it was like getting an MRI for an hour with no radiation. And in my thought, I'm like, no MRI uses radiation, like, right? that's just not how it's a magnet. It's not, mm -hmm. it's so I, I kind of, we've given our thoughts on whole body MR before and how it's stupid. And I think what I took away from it was that they pick these people that clearly are not um, what's the word I'm looking for up to date in, yeah, yeah. you know, what MR is and all this stuff. I think right. they're just getting paid a lot of money to get, who knows if they even get the scan. Did they even get, they just take a picture next to the scanner. Like, right. so I just think it's stupid. And I think, you know, and it's, and it, it does, it goes back to these people who, other folks who also aren't in medicine look up to these celebrities and what they say yeah. and they look on every word and this individual person said this. So maybe I should, yeah. they check it out. And so, and that's why these, these companies pay yeah. these celebrities, you know, endorse my, you know, Michael Jordan endorse my shoe. Yeah. This person endorsed this, this person, but it, it's one thing if Republicans Michael Jordan, wear sneakers too, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing, you know, if, if you got Michael Jordan, who wears part of his job is these shoes that he shoes, wears. Yeah. You know, that makes have, sense. Yeah. Where you have a celebrity who's endorsing some sort of piece of a medical equipment that they, they have, have no idea, no idea. They don't know how it works. They don't know the ramifications of what happens after you get the scan. They know nothing about it. They just, yeah. they get the scan, but we'll end that segment or end that question. Go check out our, um, it's called full body scam. If you want to know our full thoughts, it's one of our yeah. previous episodes. Right, right. Uh, next, next topic is I've given my thoughts on it, but I want to know your thoughts on Anthony Oliver, shameless plug, check out our YouTube red underscore talk underscore DG. I gave a, a radiologist reacts a little segment and I picked his song, Richmond, Richmond, North of Richmond to react to. So if you want to know my thoughts, go listen to it, but I'm interested to hear what Dennis's thoughts are. I think, you know, I, I, man, I, I, he seems like a legit dude. Like he wholeheartedly, you know, and so I think they, I did like the mileage. Washington DC is 92 miles North of mm -hmm. Richmond. And so it's all yeah. about the politician. Clever name. Yeah. 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 Like it, the play on words, he did great. You know, I think he did get a lot of flack for the five foot three, 300 pounds. Yeah, he did. Um, And so, so the BMI, you know, the body shamers and things like that. But I yeah. think he, I think in overall, like he spoke to a lot of people's hearts about, 
how they feel about getting screwed by politicians. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where the outpour, I, I have no idea how this guy came from out of nowhere and became, you know, over Taylor Swift and all these yeah. high end stars. That's, media. Just, that's social media, buddy. Yeah. Like somebody, you know, they got a hold of this guy and, and I saw that he turned down like $8 million. Yeah. Year, that's one thing million. I didn't talk about in the video that I saw an article yesterday. He turned down that $8 million record deal or whatever, mm -hmm. but someone somewhere said that, he's getting so many downloads and everything that he's making like $40,000 a day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe he opens up and and you've heard other artists talk about this. He opens up an Avenue of independent artists, right? So now they're not controlled by a label. They get all the money. Maybe yeah. it's a little bit less, maybe it's more, but you have the freedom to do what you want when you want with your own, like Taylor Swift, everyone knows she couldn't, I forget who the company was, but she didn't own her own catalog. They wouldn't let her buy it back. She, mm -hmm. they sold it to somebody. They didn't even, so she had to like recreate her own music. Yep. So she now owns that. Mm -hmm. So maybe he starts a trend or a wave of artists like owning their own music. Yeah. Cause I know they get scammed by Spotify. Like they don't get paid very much for Spotify. Right. Based on how many stream or uh, streams they get and everything. So. Yeah. It, it would be nice if it open up a way, but it's so tough, you know, music and everybody, you know, you go to, you go to Nashville or some places like everybody's everybody, really, yeah. It's just like podcasting. It's overset. Everybody wants to do it, and yeah, so. everybody's really good at it, and they all have the top, the best stuff. And yeah, so, yeah. You know, it, it, sometimes I feel like you just get lucky, and and maybe yeah. he just, he got lucky, saying the right thing, and, and it blew up. So, but kudos to him, dude. I mean, this might he might be a one hit wonder. He might never make another I, I don't know another good song that gets this much rate. The odds rate. are he'll never make another song. He'll always be. It's like um. Uh, what's his name? Raleigh, like like an actor that takes a role. They'll never be known for anything other than that role. He'll always he'll always be known for this song. He'll never make one bigger than, yeah. than this. Yeah. But okay, we had two more. I'm gonna skip one of them. So the last one is Dennis is an avid pickleballer. So yeah. to kind of tie things together, we're gonna talk about an article he read about you know yeah. pickleball injuries and how yeah. much it could could cost for imaging and all that kind of stuff. So go for it. Yeah, I think um, so. The, I read an article that says something around pickleball estimates of medical costs are going to be around $400 million for the yeah. 2023 here. Um, roughly 80%. Let's see here. Uh, I wanna, the analyst estimated that it would be around 67,000 emergency room visits, 366,000 outpatient visits, um, 9,000 outpatient surgeries. And so this new sport that grew from 4 million to you know, four million to forty million is the fastest growing sport in the United States. Is creating a ton of business for what Gage gets to read. This MSK mm -hmm. injuries, bone, you know, breaking bones. Mm -hmm. um, the older person demographic. I play. Yeah, uh, it's that, yeah. Yeah, I play pickleball. Um, I'm. I don't know. You know, I'm not older. I guess, but um, I'm. Yeah, you know, I'm getting there. But I, I think I play with a lot of people. I play with. 70 year olds that have dominated yeah. me that have destroyed me um i played with a 78 year old the other day and i lost uh, so yeah. obviously i'm not very good at this sport that I'm but the, i mean the it's less i guess it requires less athleticism i don't know what the word is than like tennis or something so that's why older people play it but it's i think they, they, they start to play it and they don't realize what it really entails mm -hmm. it's just like anything else if you're not fully prepared you don't know what you're you don't know what you don't know so they probably, I would imagine most injuries are elbow related, like tendonitis or something like that. And mm -hmm. the epicondylitis, whatever the, the, the layman's term is golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. Mm -hmm. Now it'd be called pickleball elbow. Yeah. That's, that's like, probably, yeah, that's probably like, the most common, right? Yeah. Likely. I mean, if somebody trips and falls, maybe they break a bone, twist an ankle something. Yeah. So I'm surprised that it's $400 million. That's it's, well, you get, it, back, yeah. Most of this, I mean, most of these things are going to be handled by x-ray, right? If there's nothing broken, mm -hmm. it's probably a tendon issue. You just rest it conservatively. Maybe a surgeon will put a steroid in or something. Yeah. So the fact that there's 9,000, you said 9,000 surgeries or outpatient or something about surgery. Yeah, 9,000 outpatient surgeries related to pickleball. Yeah, injuries. that's crazy. Yeah. 9,000, so, three a day? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Because mm -hmm. it's just, pickleball is not that serious. Like, what are they tearing that they got to... It's, you know, I mean, you'd have to be Shohei, like you can see why Shohei Otani and them like rip their tendon off their elbow. It's yeah, similar because they're that's high velocity. Pickleball is not that high velocity, so yeah. an overuse injury makes sense. But to get surgery, that's that blew my mind. 
Yeah, that's it's a lot, man. And, and and these are just estimates. We'll see. You know, as this sport, I mean, is is the fastest growing sport in the United States, and is oh, it yeah. to blow up? And it's going to be an Olympic sport, and it's going to be. You'll see, Dennis. You will see me represent the Team America at your local pickleball court. <laughs> I am not, you know, and look, Team and USA. Yeah, Team USA. And you, but I mean, you look at all the owners too. Quick, quickly, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, Dom Brady. Oh yeah, all yeah, these you people, follow, all the rich people, man. They'll show you what's what's coming up next. So it's coming, but. All right. I don't know how we did it. We got an hour. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every time. So let's, uh, you want to do your, your plug? And, oh, yeah. Uh, so we have, uh, I already mentioned the YouTube, but I'll mention it again. So YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, rad underscore talk underscore DG. Go give us a follow. We just had 50 subscribers on YouTube. So we're coming for the, we're coming for 100, I guess now. Yeah. Uh, and then was it Podbean, Apple Podcasts? You search rad talk, will pop up. You go to Spotify, you have to type Rad Talk with and then pick either Dennis or I's name before it will pop up. I think listen it's starting to, to pop up. We'll see. We'll see. Listen to the last episode if you want to know why. <laughs> Spotify. Yeah. Um, but so those there's our shameless plug for our social mm-hmm. medias. We don't do we usually just repurpose our clips, but I put out some dank memes. So go ahead and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. give us a follow, like, mm-hmm. subscribe, whatever. We're gonna be dropping some cool photos too in here too, I think. So so check out check out some cool stuff in the future. But that's right. As always, fellas and ladies, until next time. All right, guys, that'll do it for today's episode. Remember, if you like the content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.